from across the nation. America's beer distributors. Uniting for the 76th Annual Convention. This is NBWA TV. For Sunday, September 29th, 2013. Hello and welcome to the 76th Annual Convention for the National Beer Wholesalers Association. I'm Andy Field. And I'm Tala Hadavi of NBWA TV. And we will be your eyes and ears for the next few days, showing you around the trade show floor and introducing you to your fellow association members. Now this convention, of course, is all about you, the beer distribution industry. We are here to inform, perhaps even entertain, and even to serve you. So if you see us around the convention floor, come by and say hello, and maybe even share a cold beer with us. Welcome to Vegas. Welcome to Las Vegas for the 76th annual convention. Hope you have a good time. Just a little bit of fun in Vegas. Please nobody get married tonight or any other night at the convention. Welcome to Las Vegas to support National Beer Wholesalers, one of the greatest family owned business entities, you know, combination of family business owned entities there is. Welcome to Vegas and NBWA's 76th annual convention and trade show. Well, you know what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but not this time. This time, I encourage you to take home with you the energy and information that we're sharing at this convention this week. To help you do that, NBWA has prepared these little tip sheets. There are five simple ways that you can become a more engaged NBWA member. If you don't have one, just swing right by the NBWA membership booth and we'll gladly give you one. Thanks for all you do to keep America's beer distributors great. Many beer distributors are family-owned businesses passed down from generation to generation. To ease the transition from one generation to the next, NBWA is helping educate tomorrow's leaders today. The Next Generation held its first leadership conference this summer in Chicago. Andy Field was there. Many of these men and women feel like graduating seniors, excited and anxious about taking on new leadership jobs in their businesses. Guys, they're tough. They're pretty awesome. I'm trying not to screw it up is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Chris Fuse joined more than 60 next generation beer distributors here in Chicago, learning about leadership and preparing his future. The pressure comes from wanting to do the right thing for your family. And I think that that is what we all have in common here. And what we're, we're gonna be talking about in this conference is setting up the family business to be the best that it can possibly be. These are all of our attendees that are here today at email address. Adam Vitale chairs the Next Generation Group. His family did not expect to make him the company leader so quickly after his father brought him on board. I had been back in our family business for not quite a year when he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And all of our transition planning that was supposed to occur over five to seven years was essentially thrown out the window and was rapidly thrust into the next uh, generation of leadership much faster than I ever anticipated. And uh, you know, a group like this Next Generation group would have been great because it would have been a forum to talk to people that have been in the industry, defining their leadership styles, learning about the industry, and learning how to lead in the beer industry. And it would have been a, a nice, cohesive group to bounce ideas off and just a good forum. Matt, Bud, and Kevin first connected at an NBWA convention several years ago and started sharing ideas. I think anytime you can talk to somebody that's doing the same thing you can do and you can learn something. But it's all about making relationships too. You know, I think a lot of these people are very like-minded individuals, We've got really intelligent people here. The three so, next-gen um, friends joined 60 others and LearnBeer.com's Matt Dahlstrom. Because they want to know what was missing. What is our competition doing that we're not doing? This first-of-its-kind right. seminar offering leadership, succession, and strategy coaching and detailing how NBWA can help each next-gen member grow their business. Just as important as that formal institution are those social networks that develop out of this group. So I can call my friend who's a distributor in Kentucky and say, hey, what do you think about this? I'm trying this at the distributorship. I am a fourth generation gal, and so my father is still in the business, and um, I'm kind of taking over the reins. 
And so as a next generation, yeah, we're here. From more seasoned veterans to someone who may be the youngest next generation <laughs> member, still in college, 22-year-old Rob Burke. Where were you born? Uh, St. Louis. Okay. Nice round of applause. Industry is all about the relationships that you make and how you uh, cultivate those. And uh, there's no better business to be in. What other business can you sit around and have a beer while you're talking? To <laughs> and the 2014 NBWA chairman's son joined the Next Generation Group, saying every family succession plan could use a little outside advice. We're starting at this stage where we're starting to develop our careers um, and to share those ideas and ramp up to speed a little bit quicker, you know, through best practices, through things that people are doing. It's going to be invaluable. There's, you know, as long as you have an open mind, these are the type of guys you want to learn from. So I, that's kind of what we're looking for. Chris Fuge says that advice and connection help ease some of the pressure to succeed. The Next Generation Group has been a wonderful addition to the MBWA. This was my grandfather's business, um, and and then my my now my family's business. Um, which, which I am now somehow in charge of. In Chicago, I'm Andy Field, NBWA TV. Hey Dean, how you doing? Good. I've just been looking at the new NBWA app for the Convention and Trade Show. What's, what's that all about? Oh, it's a great app. It shows you maps, educational seminars, speakers, anything you want to find about the Convention and Trade Show is right here. How do I get that? Uh, you actually go on the App Store if you want, or you can go on Android and find it right there at MBWA Convention. It's that easy? It's that easy. It's wonderful, too. Please do it. With so many new labels of beer entering the market today, there's a lot for consumers to learn. Creative beer distributors manage to market new brands in a new way, in the local media. It's called earned media, or simply good public relations. And few distributors do it better than Chicago's Lewis Gluntz Beer Distributor. They are so skilled that fellow distributors honored Gluntz with a 2013 Public Affairs Award. Every beer has a story. The better you tell it, the more you'll sell. Good sales starts with great storytelling, and we have some amazing stories to tell about our brewery partners. Beer distributor, Lewis Gluntz. The first one is a variety pack of four different beers. And Chicago's Lewis Gluntz beer delivers stories at little or no cost through the local news. Hanukkah beer, the Jubilation 14 from Schmaltz Brewing Company in New York. In 2012, Glunz managed an astonishing 133 million free media impressions. That's nearly $6 million in free advertising. The ongoing campaign helped drive double-digit sales growth over the last 10 years and gave Glunz a virtual sales team, helping consumers discover new beer by alerting customers that don't know about our beers. It gets the name out there, and when they're in the stores, then they'll see that, like it's the Stiegel or a Breckenridge or what have you. They'll see that, they'll hear it, they'll read it, and then they'll see it when they're out shopping. And Glunts realized they needed more than standard advertising to promote and market the many craft beer labels they sell. I still remember the day my father pounding his fist on the desk saying, we will not be a specialty distributor, we are a mainstream distributor. And it was, Dad, this great, but there's no more big brands coming down the line. We need to start doing something different. Different products, different earned media marketing. It was something that came out of necessity because these brands didn't have the dollars and the wherewithal to really push their products. And so we had to do it for them. If somebody comes to us with a brand, it's our responsibility to do everything we can to sell that brand. It's not just something where we drop the boxes off and walk away and say thank you. You know, our job only begins when somebody entrusts us with their brands, they're entrusting us with their baby, and it's up to us to get out there and do the best possible job we can for it. So the Glunt's marketing team partnered with PR firm Wagstaff Worldwide, which helped tell the story of the great brands Glunt's delivers to market. That positioned Glunt's to be the local Chicago beer expert for the media. A big part of Glunt's job is to educate retailers. When it comes to the bars, we really have to show them these menus of list their beers, talk about them, tell them about the different styles, tell them about the different flavors. Or the media needs a go-to person for their stories. They need a partner who's going to be able to teach them these trends and the styles and the things that are happening. And we are that go-to partner with a lot of the media partners in Chicago. Uh, these guys use fresh wet hops from the harvest. There's the often no instant return on great public relations, but Glunz patiently stuck with its plan. Glunz, the best job in the world. Many beer distributors at a time when they didn't think that having a PR company was a valid resource to invest in, our company did and we've done it for years and it's now paying off. 
and it is truly one of the best investments that we've made. The Glunds family has spent the last 125 years making smart choices. From surviving the Great Depression to using modern multimedia outreach, Glunds is thriving in a challenging economy. And good public relations isn't just media impressions. We have to sell our story on all levels. So we tell it to the politicians. We bring them in to tour the facility as often as we can. Um, we go visit them. And that's so important when you look at with media, when they don't know something that they feel comfortable enough to come to us and say, can you explain to me what is this new barrel aged beer? What does that mean? So they come to us and ask us those questions in an environment that allows them to learn and it's really important to build those relationships. It's critical, it's critical to getting those sorts of impressions. Impressions driving impressive sales. In Chicago, I'm Andy Field, NBWA TV. Nearly every American knows that times have been tough the past few years, but as the U.S. recovers from the economic downturn, beer distributors are generating economic growth and fueling jobs in communities across the country. As NBWA TV's Andy Field explains, distributors are driving more than beer trucks. They are driving the economy too. This beer truck driver may not realize it, but he's helping add $54 billion to the U.S. economy. America's beer distributors are creating a third of a million direct and indirect jobs. The truck drivers, the forklift drivers, the inventory specialists, definitely the sales crews who are out there promoting the new brands and getting them to market. That's good economic news, but the recent recession has created several tough years for the industry. NBWA President Craig Purser explained the challenges at the Next Generation Conference in Chicago. When you look at the rotten 2013 fundamentals, economy, weather, and a shift, a fundamental shift in the consumer's eyes from drinking lower alcohol, bigger volume products to the growth of craft, this is something that we've got to keep in context. It's something we should be concerned with, but we shouldn't run for the doors. But that economic cloud has had a silver lining, lining store shelves across the nation. We're in the middle of a beer renaissance, and we have a great, great opportunity to tell the rest of the story. That story is helping generate customers for several hundred new brands. And because of the investments that distributors make in their suppliers, new brewers can not only get to market, but they can grow as a company as well. All that beer distribution is adding billions to the federal and local treasuries. I send a big check to my state treasury every, every month. Uh, of course, there's federal tax in that too that's taken care of at the brewery level. But we do collect those taxes and, and that, that, that's a big deal. A very big deal. Beer distributors generate more than $10 billion in federal, state and local taxes. And that doesn't include an additional $11 billion in alcohol, excise and consumption taxes. And the economic impact touches virtually everyone in each city and town. Those dollars are critical to those communities too because they are reinvested, whether it's roads or education, those dollars go back into their communities. And in an environment where we've been through the last half dozen years, where the, uh, really the economic environment has been very, very difficult, it's amazing to realize that beer distribution directly employs 130,000 hardworking men and women. That's remarkable when you look at such a relatively small industry, what kind of an economic impact that it has. Jobs from truck to forklift drivers, to inventory specialists, sales reps, and others, working to make sure all brands and beer styles reach American consumers safely and responsibly. I'm Andy Field, NBWA TV. Here are the educational sessions for Monday, September 30th. All seminar information can be found using the convention app or at the NBWA registration desk. 
The beer distribution industry is made up of dedicated families rooted in their communities, among them the DeMarco family in New Jersey. They've run high-grade beverage since 1940, and in 1961, Joseph DeMarco, the son of the founder, took over. Since then, he has been in complete service to his business, his community, and his family. And even though his son, Anthony, took over in 2005, Mr. D is still a tireless advocate for the industry today. And that's why NBWA is honoring him with the Life Service Award. We refer to it as the house that Faith built. Because we started out with nothing, we had nothing. I have faith in my employees. Joe DeMarc could never do this. My people did it. My father has always talked about family, loyalty, and respect. And when he talks about family, he just doesn't mean our immediate family. Tom Compton, 40 years with High Grade Beverage. He means our business family. And when he truly says uh, uh, the High Grade family, he means as part of our family. Robert Pelican, I've been with the company for 29 years. It's remarkable. Uh, I have four employees up in the Randolph operation that have close to 100 years of service to High Grade Beverage and the DeBarco family. Every decision you make, you got to think of a couple of simple things. Number one, how is it going to affect your employees? Number two, how is it going to affect your retailers? My father is the ultimate grinder. He's the hardest working guy I've ever met in my life. And that's why he's still successful to this day. Everyone in our family, between my mother and my father, has always had that ability to strive. My family, whether my wife, my sons, my daughters, they all do the same thing. They all participate that we made an impact on uh, the community, that we made an impact on the families of people at work here, and it really means an awful lot to my father. The company's an extension of my family. Uh, after 29 years, uh, you, know, you become part of the company, part of your family, and, and that's what it is uh, to me. It's a family-oriented business. It's given me so many opportunities to do uh, the things that we want to do, you know, uh, personally and uh, uh, business-wise. My father's here seven days a week, and he still goes out at least three or four nights a week to political functions. And whatever, whether it's senators, uh, assembly people, wherever you go, they know Joe DeMarco. I always manage to think about the good things in this life and the good things about my business. And I get off to sleep, and you know, it's nice to go to bed happy. You know, the bottom line is our life is high-grade beverage. You know, our life isn't going on vacations, our life isn't going here or there. Our life is about high-grade beverage, and that's how it's always been. But it's great to be honored by the people you work with every day, and the MVWA have such great leaders that I've known through all my years. You know, it's just, just a real honor for me. One of the best honors I've ever had in my life. This is the NBWA convention schedule for Monday, September 30th. Registration desk is open from 6.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. Educational seminars, 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. The general session, 9 a.m. till noon. And the trade show floor opens noon to 4.30 p.m. For additional information, use the NBWA convention app or head over to the NBWA registration desk. We're here in Vegas for the 76th annual convention. Uh, it's a great place, great venue. Uh, you're with beer distributors, so you're with great people. It's going to be fun. Thanks for being here. Hi, I'm Paul Kerner, and I'm from Illinois. Welcome to Vegas. And I'm Adam Vitale, also from Illinois, and uh, we're thrilled to be here in Vegas and looking forward to a great convention. I'm Linda Lawrence Dalton with Lawrence Distributing Company. I'm really excited to be here in Las Vegas because MBWA plays such an important role in the lives of distributors and I'm really excited to now be joining the Board of Directors. That's it for today's show. We'll be back here tomorrow bringing you the latest from the MBWA 76th Annual Convention. I'm Tala Hadavi. We hope to see you then.
You've been watching NBWA-TV from the 76th Annual Convention and Trade Show in Las Vegas.